All right, students, welcome to your video on simplifying and evaluating expressions. You can find this information in chapter one of your textbook somewhere. Not going to give you specific sections. You have thumbs, you have eyes, you can find it. Um, we're listening to an iTunes radio station called Studying Music. Uh, I, I remember I'm trying to do all instrumental. I think I talked about it in at least one video um, leading up to this. If not, trying to do all instrumental music. It's supposed to be better for your... Um, cognitive functioning and for your um, retention re retention of the concepts we're putting in here. So simplifying and evaluating expressions. So we're going to actually finally do some actual math. You'll see a little bit of rational number review in this video. Let's start. All right, order of operations. Finally, finally, we'll show you why you learned this. Well, we've been telling you the order of operations for years. You've been using it in numerical expressions. Um, but now we're finally going to use it in algebraic expressions. Now, uh, some of you, of course, simplified expressions, or excuse me, evaluated expressions like this last year, evaluated expressions like this last year, um, and some of you didn't. But the whole point of order of operations, the entire reason that you learn the concept of the order of operations is algebraic expressions. Let me show you. So you know you start with parentheses or grouping symbols. We don't see any in this um, particular um, example, but you do start with that. Then you apply exponents, then multiplication and division as it comes from left to right, which is why they're both red, and addition and subtraction as they come from left to right. That's why, uh, uh, this right here is why we learn that. Now look what you have. 3 times x squared plus 4x plus 5. So 3 times some number x squared plus 4 times some number x minus 5. So when you look at the order of operations here, you would indeed start by applying the exponent. So if I know what x is, I'm going to apply the exponent first. After I've applied that exponent, I'm going to multiply this. Well, we're adding 4x to that. So we multiply the 4 times the x before we add it because we're adding 4x's. Not we're adding 4 and then we're multiplying by x. That's not what that's telling me to do. Finally, we take away 5. So the order of operations, the whole purpose, is algebra. That's why we learn it. In an algebraic expression, what makes two terms like terms? Well, like terms have the same variable with the same exponent. So it's not enough to have the same variable, got to have the same exponent. So let's color code here. Let's use red to underline the first set of like terms I come to. So I'm going to start by underlining the 3x squared. Well, where's a like term to 3x squared? You have 2x, but same variable, but not same exponent. So there's another one. So those two are like terms. And then 2x would be like terms with this 7x over here on the end. And this minus 4 would be all on its own. So if I was going to combine like terms, for example, I would have to take and do 3 minus 3 minus 1, the invisible 1, x squared, so 2x squared, and then plus 2x plus 7x, so plus 9x, and then sad lonely minus 4 doesn't have a friend to change his value. So like terms, same variable, same exponent. Try the next one. Pause it, try it, and then start the video again, and you'll watch me do it. All right, so hopefully you paused first. We're going to match this up. Uh-oh, nothing to match it up with. So this time, it looks like the, the x squared term is the orphan term. Okay, how about minus x plus 6x? So minus x plus 6x, and then I've got plus 8 minus 10. So the negative 5x squared It's going to stay right there in the answer. Minus x plus 6x, so that's a minus 1, minus 1, invisible 1, Minus 1 plus 6. Minus 1 plus 6 is a plus 5x. And then plus 8 minus 10. So positive 8 and negative 10 makes negative 2. Okay, color coding it to set that up. All right, what's the difference between simplify and evaluate? Simplify and evaluate. All right, simplify. To simplify means you do all the math you can do all the math you can until you can't do any more. You can simplify a numerical expression, like 3 plus 5, we can simplify that to 8. We can also simplify an algebraic expression, 
like um, think about what we just did 3x squared minus x squared that'd be 2x squared so we've simplified it down we've done the math we can do there until we can't do any more but evaluate means something different evaluate means plug in replacement values for the variables and it should be then gah, I hate it one of my typos then eh, then simplify to find the numerical mm, value of the expression. So evaluate means you actually plug in values. So to evaluate, say that I would take this to evaluate it, I would plug in a value for the x squared. Say x was equal to 3. I would plug in that 3 and that means then I would go about my business with the order of operations. So square the 3, 9 times 2, 18. Let's try simplifying some expressions and then we'll try evaluating some. All right, simplify each expression. My suggestion would be to pause it, try them, and then continue the video. Um, you can fast forward at that point through my commentary, but you'll whisk my, whisk, hmm, miss my witty jokes. That's actually called a solipsism where you switch the two um, letters. Um, instead of miss, let's see, I was going for miss my jokes. You will miss my jokes, and I started to say you mill wiss my jokes. That's called a solipsism. I know that has nothing to do with math, but that's just one of those cool asides that I like to give you when I can. Anyway, pause your video, try these problems, and then come back and um, um, see my answers. All right, so I'm going to get rid of this mess over here. Okay, so the first one's a numerical expression. We're going to do the math inside the parentheses in both circumstances first, because there is actual math to do inside those parentheses. So let's, 3 minus 5 is negative 2. Negative 2 to the third power, and then 18 over 6, that's 3. 3 to the second power. Negative 2 to the third power. Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 would be, let's see, positive 4 times negative 2. That's a negative 8. So negative 8 plus 3 squared is 9. That expression has a value of 1. Over here, we're just combining like terms. So I'm going to underline my sets of like terms here. So n plus 9n, that's 1n. 1n plus 9n, that's going to give me 10n. And then minus 10 minus 3 is minus 13. Think of it as a negative 10 and a negative 3. Last one here. Make it a different color. Let's see. We're distributing, good old distributive property. Now, I haven't gone over that again, but it should look familiar. We cannot add, you cannot add this x squared and this 4. They are not like terms. x squared plus 4 is not the same thing as x squared times 4. Um, if you added $4 to your allowance, and if you quadrupled your allowance, would that be the same thing? Now, I know you're like, well, I don't get an allowance. I never did either. Say you get 5 bucks. If you add 4 to your allowance, you get 9 if you quadruple or multiply your allowance by 4, you get 20. Me thinks there's a difference there, and I think you'd rather have this one. It's much larger. But I am pointing out that plus 4 and times 4 are not the same thing, so we're not going to add these. Don't add them. Distribute. 3 times x squared is 3x squared. 3 times plus 4 is plus 12, and then you got a minus 2 on the end. 3x squared plus 10. Now we've simplified all of the simplified them, because that's as simple as the answer gets. In this one, the simplest answer was a number. In this one, the simplest answer was a two-term expression, and the same in this one. All right, moving on to evaluating algebraic expressions. So you're going to copy the expression and the replacement values, the given replacement values, what x and a and whatever, whatever, le whatever the letters are, whatever they're equal to. That's the given replacement values. You're going to rewrite the expression, replacing the variables with the given values. You're going to put the values in parentheses when necessary. We'll look at when and, and where that's going to be necessary. Use the order of operations to find the value of the expression. Okay. Let's try these. So, I apologize for moving the iPad. I know it probably creates a little bit of sound distortion. Um, and I'll move the music away a little bit there. Got a little close. Let me give you the replacement values for these variables. We're going to use negative 1 for A, 2 for B. We're going to use, where is it? I'm looking at my notes, 5 for C. 
1 half for D, 3 halves for E, and negative 8 for F. Go ahead and evaluate the expressions, or you can watch me do it. I'm going to walk right through all of them. I'm going to switch to, let's see, we'll just use some blue here. And I'm going to show you where and when it's necessary to use parentheses in your, um, in your work. Okay, again, I apologize for moving the iPad if there's any sound distortion. So the first one, I'm just taking the expression and I'm taking out a and replacing it with negative 1 and I'm taking out c and replacing it negative 1. Let's talk about the quick import quickly let's talk about the importance of the par the parentheses. Ugh, stumbling over my words. Let's talk about the importance of these parentheses. a squared means a times itself. The parentheses around the negative 1 makes me actually multiply negative 1 times negative 1 and that's what we want right there. One aside is that negative 1 squared without the parentheses is not the same thing as negative 1 with the parentheses and squared. In this one on the left, you square the 1, then you tack on the negative sign. And in this one over here, you multiply the negative 1 times itself and you would get a positive. So this side, always negative. This side, that would always be a positive. Anyway, just wanted to make sure we knew that. Alright, so negative 1 squared is 1 plus 10, so that value is 11. The next one, 5d plus 2f. I would put this in parentheses. Uh, oop, plus 2f. Plus 2 and f is negative 8. I put these in parentheses to show multiplication and really only to show multiplication here. So 5 times a half is 5 halves. 5 halves and 2 times negative 8 is negative 16, so minus 16 but I'm going to write that as a fraction because if I have to um, subtract 16 from 5 halves, I'm going to write the number 16 as a number of halves. Well, how many halves are there in 16? If I have 16 pizzas, I have 16 times 2 halves, 32 halves. 5 minus 32 is negative 27 halves. It's an ugly, ugly answer, but it is the correct answer. All right, moving along. Absolute value of... 7 minus 2 times negative 8. Absolute value, you should recall, absolute value is distance from 0. Distance from 0. Ooh, messy. All right, absolute value is always positive. Absolute value is always positive. So let's find the math on the inside. Don't worry about the absolute value bars. Just keep them there. Minus 2 times minus 8 right here. Minus 2 times minus 8. That's a plus 16. And that's because it's minus times a negative, like a negative times a negative. That's the absolute value of 23. So that's, oop, I always do that with absolute value bars. So that's 23 because you only put down positive answers for absolute values. How far away from 0 is 23? It's 23 steps. Uh-oh. Time for a, um, an iTunes ad. We don't want to listen to the ads, so I'll just turn that down and let it play. All right, the next one. This is one that they love to use to trick you. 6 plus 5 is not done first. Do not make that 11. 6 plus 5 times negative 1 plus, we put in the 5 for C. This time it's not necessary for me to put parentheses around each of those numbers individually because I'm adding them. I'm not multiplying them, I'm not applying an exponent, I'm not subtracting. Those are all circumstances where I would probably end up keeping the um, parentheses around the individual value. Turning the music back up because the add is over. Now, order of operations says parentheses first, so inside the parentheses we get a 4. And this is tricky to remember, but you're not adding this, you're doing this multiplication first. So this is 6 plus 20, or 26. We're almost done with the video, guys. So 3, alright, this last one, inside parentheses, 3 times e, which is 3 halves. And I would put that in parentheses, so you get a double layer of parentheses. And then at the end, we have a minus 1 half. 3 times 3 halves is 9 halves plus 2, but I'm not going to write it as 2. Again, like I did earlier with this problem over here, I'm going to write it as a number of halves. I want to be convenient. I'm not handing you a calculator anytime soon, guys. Sorry, that's just how it is. I don't do that. I can't have you relying just on your calculator. All right, so now 9 fourths and um, 9 halves, excuse me, and 4 halves is 13 halves. Minus 1 half is 12 halves is 
6. Ugh, exhausting. Last problem. The square root of 8b. Well, 8 and b is 2. So that's going to be 16 in there. We'll deal with that in a minute. And the cube root of 16d, which is 1 half. 16 times a half is actually also the thing, same thing as a half times 16, which is half of 16, which is 8. So that's the cube root of 8. And this is the square root of 16, which is 4. The cube root of 8, oh, look, the two answers are the same, 5 and 6. Cube root of 8 is 2, square root of 16 is 4. 4 plus 2, <laughs> we also get 6, which is convenient because I was completely and totally out of space. I hope you enjoyed your simplifying and evaluating expressions video. Bring in your questions to class, and I will see you next time.